Uh, and welcome. My name is uh, Jim Kincaid, and I'm here to uh, extend, uh, I don't know, we've got a, already a... I, oh, a mic that's not on. <laughs> I hope that's not a sign of things to come. We've got the uh, uh, problems. Turn off your cell phones, by the way, please. Uh, please. <laughs> I'd like to welcome you uh, to this conference on the life, work, influence, and overall happiness caused by Lewis Carroll, the writer, and to a very small extent, Charles Dodson, the fussy and uninteresting Oxford Don. This conference marks, we modestly note, the most significant gathering of Lewis Carroll notable since his death. <laughs> And since we cannot expect such a gathering ever again to occur, we had better make the most of it. That was a joke. No. <laughs> Didn't mean that we're all going to expire at the end of this. This conference is sponsored by uh, USC Doheny Library and the Huntington Library, with some help from the USC English Department, gratefully received. We are also delighted to participate throughout our doings with the distinguished members of the Lewis Carroll Society of North America and are extremely grateful to have them with us. In fact, I would like to introduce Alan Tannenbaum, who is president, uh, who will say a couple of words about the uh, society. Thank you, Professor. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you very much for holding this conference. Uh, it's been a few years since it, in the making, and uh, we were approached and, and invited to come and have one of our meetings here, and which we've done. We have, a, we have more than 40 members who are traveling here from all over, uh, members who, are, who spend a lot of time talking about Lewis Carroll, collecting Lewis Carroll, speculating about things, and um, we, we're delighted to be here. We're on the board of directors meeting. Tonight, we'll be here for the two days, and uh, sort of networking, we get together twice a year, and this is a perfect opportunity. We really appreciate the uh, venue and the opportunity, and uh, check us out on lewiscarroll.org. Thank you very much, Alan. The two uh, generators of this conference, the only reason uh, that we can, uh, we can have it and all the many Lewis Carroll activities at USC over the past several years have been our warm-hearted and generous friends, George Cassidy and Linda Parker. They have made possible the collection on which this conference is based and all the auxiliary uh, activities, most notably what we call a Wonderland contest honoring and rewarding the best student work connected with Lewis Carroll as author, scientist, photographer, logician, and friend of children. It is to George Cassidy and Linda Parker that we dedicate this conference with our warmest thanks. I'm sure they don't want to stand up, but please. In reference to the uh, Wonderland student competition, I direct your attention to the case down the hall uh, on this floor by Special Collections, where our house, some of last year's uh, fine entries and winners as well. The conference, or the contest, I should say, is going on right now, and we have uh, the usual number of terrific uh, entries. We would also like to thank the Huntington Library, most especially Roy Ritchie, for their generous partnership, along with some other terrific people who have assisted me in putting all this together. Of course, their assistance has been minor indeed compared to what <laughs> I have done. <laughs> But Mother always said it was a gracious thing to thank others, especially if they scarcely deserve it. <laughs> so heaps of thanks to Diane Wagner for all her help <laughs> with planning and coordinating, and to Tyson Gaskell, above all to Tyson Gaskell, who not only did 97% of the work involved, but was an indefatigable schemer, a wise planner, and a good friend throughout. Tyson is right here somehow. <laughs> If you have any questions or comments or complaints, please see Tyson. <laughs> or also Andrew Wolf, as Andrew uh, is back back here, also has been. Thank you very much. Was worked with worked with great energy on so many logistical issues throughout. 
few other details. Uh, lunch will be down the hall uh, on this floor, room 240, uh, after the talk and question period. And at 3 today, I'll mention this now, uh, there are a choice of four activities, at least, and you can do all four if you like, <laughs> including refreshments, uh, which will be outside the room here, kind of a tea, refreshments. And a, uh, Jeffrey Igger uh, will be speaking in the Foytbonger Library, which is just down the hall, will dis be displaying, I should say, discussing and selling his Dodson at auction at about, I think, about 3.15. So you'll have time to do that and several other things if you want. The Curious World of Lewis Carroll, the, the exhibit of the Cassidy Collection, the main, or one of the exhibits, is also on this floor, along with, uh, at the Horton Room, uh, it's on the first floor? First floor. First floor is the, is the I'm sorry, is the main exhibit, the, the uh, general exhibit, but on this floor, the Horton Room, at 3 o'clock, and also at lunchtime, and again at the end of the day, you should take a look at the uh, recent items in the collection which are on display there. I guess George will be there during those times to, uh, uh, to discuss those uh, recent acquisitions. I think that's, uh, that's all. And at 5 today, there's a reception on the main floor uh, which we'll have indoors because of the uh, because of the weather, and the last detail restrooms are down the hall on this on this floor. As you can see from your program, the range of topics covered by the speakers here is wide indeed. We figured that such a gathering of eminences, with such a gathering of eminences, it would be ridiculous to fence them into a narrow topic. Besides, Carol is one of the least specialized of all great artists, roaming over a landscape so vast and varied that nobody in our time could cover all its features. Our speakers, though, manage among them not simply to be faithful to what Carol did and thought, but to touch on a whole lot he didn't do and never thought. <laughs> how, else, how else would scholarship <laughs> prosper? These are eminent scholars we have here, and they are certainly not hamstrung by what others might regard as reasonable or sensible or sane. <laughs> However, the conference does have a slight slant or leaning, and that is toward the investigation of that very curious idea of, of the child, an idea more or less invented by the Victorians and certainly helped into its modern form a great deal by Lewis Carroll. This child, this strange and troublesome fantasy we still have hanging around is still something we hardly know what to do with. Like Carroll, we are capable of pouring onto this figure oceans of sentimental blot. All that child of the pure, unclouded brow nonsense, the dream child that he talked about and we wish he hadn't. <laughs> but Carol also unleashed a very modern aggression against the child. Humpty Dumpty suggests that Alice might have done very well, been more comfortable, had she left off growing altogether at a younger age, making everyone around her a lot happier with a timely suicide. <laughs> Even more pointedly, the pigeon tells us there's no essential difference between little girls and serpents, and we feel the force of that observation. <laughs> little girls, little children, are the, are the slithery thing in the garden, our temptation and the cause of our fall. We worship this figure as we assault it, protect it with one hand, and hammer at it with the other. Carol seems to have posited several different sorts of children to guide into Wonderland and behind the looking glass. Among these are a shadow child that is receptive and imaginative, a child who knows it is always tea time and, will let, and who will let those magic words hold her fast. This is the child who will never grow up, grow up in a way, betraying Carol as they all did over and over again. But there are other children there, aggressive children, predatory children, ridiculously obedient children, curious children, and obtuse children. All are packed into Alice, which is one hell of a load to ask one little girl to carry. But then we all ask our children, all children, to carry a load that is far too heavy. We want them to fulfill and reconstruct our pasts, to answer our complex needs in a way they never fully can, but we never stop asking. In the end, it is we who are obtuse, Though there's no question that Lewis Carroll, with the help of the magnificent scholars here assembled, can lessen our dim-wittedness and open our hearts, at least a little, make us more generous toward children and even toward our own preposterous selves. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for attending.